Hey, good morning and welcome to Lane Prairie Baptist Church. We're so excited that you're joining us today on Facebook or YouTube. If you have not yet subscribed to our YouTube channel or liked our Facebook page, please do that now. Um, if you're visiting with us today, we are so excited that you've joined us to worship today. Uh, in the description is a link to a digital connect card. If you would not mind filling that out, that would be your gift to us today. Members, if you're here, let us know in the comments below. We're excited today to have Dennis Swanberg back with us. He was with us this past February at our love banquet, and he's back today to encourage us. And he's going to be encouraging us from the book of Hebrews. Let me share with you Hebrews 13, 5 this morning. Let your conduct be without covetedness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Let's pray this morning. Father, we come today as this time in which we have to worship, to sing praises, to hear your word uh, preached. Father, we pray uh, over every single person that is uh, out there right now who's watching this service. Father, I pray that you would, uh, and uh, Father, I believe you already have begun to do a work in their life and in, in just having them here. And so, Father, wherever they're at in relation to you, if they're close to you, if they're far off, if they've never come to a point where they've entered into relationship with you, Father, I pray today that your spirit would draw them. I pray that your spirit would convict where convicting needs. I pray your spirit would encourage and comfort where that is needed. Lord. But Father, we pray over... Uh, Dennis, as he begins to preach your word today, Father, we pray that you would speak through him um, and in your spirit speak to us and change us, conform us to the image of Christ. And we give you praise for what you're going to do this day. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hey, kids. This morning, I just have a candle right here in front of me. And this candle represents our lives as humans. And this lighter, this fire represents the fear that all of us have. And see, all of us have some kind of fear. It could be either a fear of snakes, it could be a fear that we're afraid of the dark, or it could be serious cases like we're afraid that we're gonna lose our family and friends. But we all have this fear that we let live in our lives. And see, that fear can control the things that we choose. See, just like fire, fear can be good and bad. Fire can be good in the sense that it helps us cook, it can protect us, and even in some senses that it can light up our houses. But also the good things, the bad things that can happen is that if we touch the fire, it can burn us and it can hurt us. But also if we let fire loose in a forest, it can cause this huge catastrophe called forest fire. See, if we let those things dictate our lives, fear will destroy us. See, if we let fear live in our lives throughout our whole entire life, we won't do the things that God has called us to do. So just a simple way that we can control that is our faith in Jesus Christ. See, God actually tells us in the Bible that we should cast our fears and our anxieties on Jesus because He cares for us. So the best way for us to control this fear is to simply put our faith in Jesus and just throw it on top of our fear. See, when we trust in God and we have faith in Jesus, He promises us that He's going to conquer that fear. Enjoy the rest of worship. I want to draw our attention once more to the scriptures today from Isaiah chapter 40, starting in verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Let's worship in song today. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Strength will rise as we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord. Our God, you reign forever, our hope, our strong Everlasting 
God. You do not think you won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak, and you comfort those in need. You lift us up on a wings like you. As we wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord, we will wait upon the Lord our God. You reign forever, our hope, our strong deliverer. You are the everlasting God, the everlasting Everlasting God, you do not fail. You won't grow weary. You're the defender of the weak. You comfort those in need. You lift us up. his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy
So, Father, we come before you this morning doing just that, blessing you with all that is within us through our song. And now we turn our attention to your word. We thank you for Dennis being here with us this morning. And we pray that we would draw encouragement from the word that you've pressed upon his heart to speak to us today. We thank you that the grave has been overcome by Jesus. And now you have provided for us the way to you. And it's only through Christ. And so help us to understand that this morning. Help us to, to sing uh, continually with gratitude in our hearts. Help us to listen attentively this morning. We love you and we thank you for uh, the gift that you have given us by your very presence. And we pray this in the name of Jesus today. Amen. I want to share with you uh, today one of the most encouraging words in the Bible. Now, there's a lot of encouraging words. Every preacher has his favorites. I have my favorites. Matter of fact, what's what tough being a minister of the gospel is later on I may bring another message saying here's the most encouraging word in the Bible. Well, you know, someone may say, well, Brother Dennis, you said that several months ago when you were at our church. You gave us the most. Well, there's a lot of encouraging words but I want to share with you one 
of the most encouraging words in the Bible. Uh, look at Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse 5. Uh, it's that latter part of verse 5 that says, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And in these days, that is an important word. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I'm not going to do it. He, he, he says, I'm here for you. And just as I've been with uh, my people of faith uh, over the hundreds and thousands of years, so it is today. I'm with you. I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. I, I, I promise you. It's, it's right out of the word of God. And it's a verse that we can all hold on to. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Joshua chapter 1 verse 5 uh, said it. I will never leave you nor forsake you. It's just a great, great word. But I want us to sort of begin this message, uh, one of the most encouraging words in the Bible, with verse 1 of chapter 13 in Hebrews. It said, Let brotherly love continue. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. <laughs> I really believe that. You know what? I have met some strange folks before in church, some characters with a capital K. And sometimes I've wondered, has, did the Lord just sort of send them to us to see how we're going to treat them? Are you with me? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but he said, beware, you may entertain angels unaware, messengers uh, unaware. So treat them well. And, uh, and then he said, remember them that are in bonds as bound with them. Uh, those folks in prison, remember them. Those that are locked up, those that are tied up, those that are separated uh, from us. And them which suffer adversity, folks that are going through tough times, as being yourselves also in the body. Then in verse 4 he said, Marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers, uh, the adulterers, God will judge. And then in verse 5 he says, Let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. First of all, I just want to talk just a minute about how important it is to love the brethren, to love the body of Christ, to, to love other believers. I remember my first pastorate. Uh, in Rogers, Texas, First Baptist Church, Rogers, Texas, uh, the only Baptist church in Rogers, Texas. And, uh, man, it was, it was a, a great church. It was my first church and had some great people there. You know, I still recall so many of their names. They were so good to me and my wife, Lori. We were young. We didn't know a whole lot. We, uh, they just loved on us. And it really meant a lot to us uh, how much they cared for us and they loved on us. Uh, I remember after I'd been there a few years, there was a pulpit committee. We called them back then a pulpit committee. And they had come to hear me. Well, there was about 11 of them. So in our little church of about 100, 11 people stood out. I mean, you, they could not, there was no place to hide. And anyhow, uh, I remember uh, there was this one, one of the pulpit committee members, Jerry, Jerry Sessions, was right behind Lorraine Tharp. And during the welcome time, Lorraine Tharp, she turned around, and she was a tough little woman and feisty little thing. She turned around, and she looked at him, and she said, Are you a visitor? And uh, he said, Well, yes. Are you on a pulpit committee? And he said, Well, you know, the Lord works in, 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 in mysterious ways. And she looked at him. He doesn't work that way here. Are you on a pulpit committee? And, you know, he said, well, yes, ma'am, I am. Well, you're not welcome here. Well, you know, and we've laughed about that. And I ended up going to that church, First Baptist Church, Saginaw, Texas, uh, their pulpit committee. And we would laugh about Lorraine. But I'll tell you something about Lorraine Tharp. Lorraine loved her pastor. Lorraine loved her church. I remember when she passed away, I was one of the first ones to find out. I went to her little house just a couple of blocks from the church and little bitty, little bitty house didn't have much of anything and I went into there and she was, she was still there in the house and I'm waiting on the uh, 
a funeral guys to come, and I saw her Bible there, and I picked her Bible up, and this was on like a Tuesday. I picked her Bible up, and I'm just sitting there waiting for them to come, and I'm flipping through her Bible, and there was her tithe, her, her tithe in, in the envelope in her Bible, already ready for Sunday. That was the kind of lady she was. I love Lorraine Tharp. Look forward to, to uh, seeing her uh, again in heaven. And there were a lot of great people there at First Baptist Rogers, Texas. And then when I went to Saginaw, great people there, people that I loved. Uh, I remember one time we had on Easter Sunday uh, a leak in the roof, and the water was coming through the ceiling, and, and some of my men went on up there. Harold Hawthorne went up there, and, and Ernie Forrester, our youth pastor, and James Craver, and they went up there and trying to fix it in the middle of the service, and sure enough, Terry Houston, oh, what a good man he was. All of a sudden, he, he's trying, they're trying to fix it during the service, and he comes right through the ceiling, right there on Easter Sunday in front of God and everybody, scared everybody half to, half to death. At the end of the service, when they were walking out, I basically said to everybody, I said, you know, uh, up from the grave he arose, and down from the ceiling he came. And that made the paper at Fort Worth Star Telegram. Uh, the Sunday that there was, uh, well, there wasn't much laughter then from the rafters, but he came through the rafters, and, and he ended up being okay and passed away some years ago, and I miss him. I loved him. I, I loved the people at First Baptist Saginaw. I loved the folks that were at Second Baptist Church Hot Springs where I pastored. I loved the folks at First Baptist West Monroe uh, who loved me, and I loved them, and it was tough. That was back in 1995. I left the pastorate to do what I'm doing nowadays, speaking and traveling and encouraging one another now that his day draws, draws near. But I'm going to tell you, what, what blessed my life were people, uh, people that loved me and people that I loved. And it's important that we love the brethren. He, he starts off and said, let brotherly love continue. He's talking to these Hebrew Christians, and he said, you, you've got to love one another. You've got to get along. You know, some of these uh, Sundays now, we haven't been able to gather together because of this uh, uh, coronavirus, and uh, so we haven't really even had a chance to rub each other the wrong way uh, or get sort of irritated at someone or somebody um, or even time to sort of make up, you know. Of course, maybe that may be the case. When we all get back, so there might be someone you need to, before you go to the altar, you need to make, make up with some folks because we need the brethren. We need to love one another. And it goes on to say we should show hospitality to strangers. We, we need to do that. We need to help people that we don't even know. And one thing I love about your church uh, here at Lane Prairie, I'm going to tell you, y'all reach out to people. Y'all help folks with food. You, you have emergency funds set up to help people and to love on people and encourage people. And it, for a while, it might have just been a few folks here and a few folks here, but now it's into the hundreds that you're helping. Uh, thank God. Uh, for your pastor, Jerry Clements, who, who, uh, who, who has led you for these 20-some-odd years, and his wife, Andrea, uh, because they, they realize we got to love the brethren, and we got to show hospitality. You've shown hospitality to the swan, my little wife, Laurie, my honey love, my sugar babe, my woman. Uh, that is so important. And those that are in prison, we got to show them compassion and love. we got to be praying for those believers that are uh, some of them overseas and missions that are, are behind bars. They're, they're, we can't get to them. They're alone. Uh, we've got to reach out to them in love and do what we can. Um, we, we need to still hold marriage in high regard in our Christian life. Uh, marriage is so important. Uh, man, love your wife, man. Ladies, love your man. You know, I know you... I don't know, Laurie and I, we've been together over 50 days straight in the midst of this uh, crisis and we're not used to being around that much well we got to start to work at it we got to you, you got to always work at marriage but maybe even more so now I mean you know sort of like a porcupine dance oh Chuck Swindoll talked about you know uh, we're like porcupines uh, when it gets cold we get close because we need each other and then when we get too close the porcupines come out we sort of we sort of you know stab each other with porcupines. Then we had to move, move apart a little. Then we come back a little. It's sort of like the porcupine dance, I think is what he called it. Well, that's sort of the way it is sometimes in marriage. But, oh, we've got, to, we've got to lift up marriage and hold up marriage, and we've got to work at it. Uh, 
marriage is a picture. It's a picture of the gospel. Uh, the bride and the groom. It's a picture of, you know, the church is, is Jesus' bride and he's the groom and he loves his bride. He loves his church. Your marriage is a picture to the lost world of what the gospel is like. So remember that, you know. Uh, we, he died for his church and his church wants to live for him. So uh, marriage, keep that in high honor. And your character. Um, I tell you, one defining thing about your character and my character is how we feel about money and does money have us or do we have money? Uh, you know, what's the real value of all that? Are we, are we in love with stuff? Uh, I was telling my family the other day, I said, I'll tell you, in the midst of all this, the most important thing for me is my relationship with my wife and my, 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 my two sons and my daughter-in-law and my two grandkids. That means everything to me. Uh, family, our loved ones, uh, we, that's more important than money and stuff. So he's going along and he's telling them all that. He's trying to encourage these uh, Hebrew uh, uh, Christians. And uh, he, they understand the Old Testament. They understand the Jewish law. They understand all that. And this new, this being in Christ is a new thing to them. He's trying to build them up, the writer is here. And, and the Lord, it's, it's a quote of the Lord to say, uh, For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Wow. Now this is a verse that just sort of blows my mind. He said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's the way I would just say it. You know, I majored at uh, Greek at Baylor University. I'm not a scholar. Uh, don't claim to be, but I took 30 hours just because I love my professor. Love being with some of my other buddies. There's about a dozen of us and, and majored in it. Well, I, you know, I'd make a B and make a C. I made one D that I was very proud of. But in this verse, in the Greek language, there's actually five negatives in this sentence. Uh, when you go, there's two double emphatics and then there's another negative in this verse, we translate it this way. I will never leave you nor forsake you. We just have two negatives. There's actually five negatives. With the help of Billy Graham, you could sort of do it this way. You know, Billy Graham would say, now normally, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. But in all reality, you could say, I'll never, never, no never leave you nor forsake you. It's a forever never. I'll never, ever leave you nor forsake you. Now, that is sort of wild. I mean, that makes that verse really come alive. That's encouraging because i got to have him. you got to have him. I, I don't know about your heart right now, but in some of these days and tough days of not knowing when or how or, or what's going to go on or what's happening, you know, what's the truth, what's not the truth, uh, people dying, people sick, people fearful, all this kind of stuff, I'm going to tell you what. I'll tell you what we need more than anything is a personal relationship with God through Jesus Christ. I mean, without that, we're going to be tossed to and fro. You know, we need each other. And God's believers need each other. You know, the uh, message uh, last week out of James, you know, sometimes we, we have our favorites and treat people some you know with some favoritism Rick was telling us and and that's true we we need to treat each other very special just like he treats us special one on one we are valuable to him he's valuable to us that personal relationship with him is what's going to see you and me through uh, as much as I love my wife as much as I love my boys as much as I love going on the road having you know speaking and and people coming up and saying, I enjoyed that, or they laughed, or they were encouraged. You know, uh, what I have to have is that, that word from him, from him alone, and hearing him say, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. You know, there's been times uh, in life where, uh, you know, a husband and wife say you're not getting along. Things are tough. Things are bad. Maybe you've been there. 
And then one day she comes home and she sees a note that he left on the refrigerator. And he said, this buck private is not taking orders anymore. I'm going AWOL. Goodbye. And you never see him again until divorce court. Some of you have been there. And there's an aloneness that is accompanies that kind of reality. I want you to know something. God will never, 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 no never, leave you like that. He'll never forsake you like that. He'll never walk away from you like that. He's, he's closer than your very breath. He is your breath. He is within you. He is our hope of glory. And there's times when you're sick and your despair is, as one guy would say, is as deep as the sea. Uh, he bathes in despair, bathes in depression. Uh, some understand what it means to, to be depressed. Uh, and we all can go through depression. It's a real thing. It's not just young people, not just median age, it's senior adults. Uh, we can get down and, and depressed, and, and we have to pull out of it. And there's times when, yes, we need a doctor. We need medical uh, attention sometimes. Sometimes uh, we may have a chemical imbalance and all that. But oftentimes uh, our depression is that we have forgotten who our source of strength is. And it's, it's, it's our Lord and our Lord alone. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Now, what does never mean? I want us to take a look at some of this uh, together. What is never? Uh, it's a great little word. Uh, it's not a bland never. It's a compounding never. You have five negatives. Not each negative just added to another, but multiplied by the other. I'll never, no, never, never leave you nor forsake you. It's a multiplication. It's a powerful, I'm not going uh, ever, never am I going to leave you. Not for a minute, not for a second. I'm with you. It's a, it's a, it's a forever never that has no exceptions. Listen to me. If God... Uh, will never leave you. He has not left you now. He's with you right now. A as you watch this, he he's with you. He's in you. Uh, he's present. Uh, can you accept that in your mind, in your heart? It's, it's, it's a little word called faith. Faith. And sometimes we all need to make it like a verb to faith. Faith oneself in him in in his will you need to do that in your will in your emotions uh, you need to put this like a branding iron on your heart and your mind and soul he will never do that to you no never 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 uh, you can get well and I can get well if we put our whole mind and heart with the mind of Christ to this powerful positive negative never never well, I leave you. I will never walk away from you. I will, I will never leave you. I will never turn my back on you. Ne never, never. I'm not going to do that. Um, so then we have to look at the next word. We've, never is, is, is never. But what about leave? It's a little word, a little Greek word. It, it means to leave behind, to abandon, to give up on. To send back. He said, I will never send you back. I will never give up on you. I'm not going to abandon you. I, I'm not going to walk away from you. I, you know, sometimes when we get put, up, put out with someone, you know, we walk out the door. We leave. Uh, there's been times in my life with my sons and what have you in situations that I, you know, I, I sort of, I had, to, I had to walk away from them. I had, I couldn't, I couldn't fix it. I, I left them. Uh, and it was tough for the old dad to leave because, you know, we want to fix everything. But I knew that when I left and walked away that I knew that my Lord Jesus would never, never leave my boys, never leave my family, never leave my friends, never, 
Never, never. Uh, never leave. He's not going to do that. Uh, we have to grasp that. Uh, he doesn't take you, he, he doesn't leave you behind. And that means that he's taking you along with him. He's on this journey with you. He's on this journey with me. Uh, he hasn't abandoned you, so why do you feel so alone? Well, your emotions are whispering to you, and, uh, and your emotions are saying that he has abandoned you, that he's not happy with you, that he's not going to put up with you. So right now, you need to call your emotions a liar. You just need to say it. You know, if I was to use my John Wayne, I'd say, oh, they're a liar. Can't believe them. You hear me? Just let them go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they are liars. And the great liar, Satan himself, wants to whisper in your ear, in my ear, and make you think that he, he's not with you, that he, that he has left you, uh, that he, he, uh, he, he's never going to uh, come back. You're all alone. You've blown it. It's over. Uh, you need to call those emotions a liar right now. And you need to trust God's word as his truth. Truth. There's a lot of folks today, what is truth? You know, there's, some people say there's no absolute truths. Yes, there are absolutes. We have this word of God that God has given us. It's outlasted uh, many that wanted to debunk it, say that it has no value. This book is alive. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of God lasts forever. I want you to understand that this word is a true word from God, given to you, given to me. So we need to get our emotions in tune with the word of God. Uh, are you reading through the Bible? Do you have a Bible study plan uh, where you read through the scriptures every day? I realize there's times in your life and my life where Somehow, some way, we're just not in the mood, and we don't always have that quiet time. We don't. Have, some people are real good at a quiet time; others are not as good as a quiet time. But I'm gonna tell you, I'll tell you what 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 will happen. Life will demand. Life will demand a quiet time. Life will demand that you stop, and you realize that he 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 has never left you. He's with you. He's right here. Um, you know, your emotions are temporal, uh, but we need the non-temporal Word of God that's going to be there for us forever. Never. And the word leave, He will not leave you. And then the next word, He will not forsake you. Uh, this is another Im important little word. What does it mean? Well, let me just say this. I've stared at a lot of people's faces over the years, speaking, preaching, counseling. And when I look on the face of many brothers and sisters, sometimes I see, I see uh, uh, the face like everyone has abandoned me. They've forsaken me. They've given up on me. Uh, you know, I've done this. I've done that. They won't have me back. They, they won't love me. Uh, I'm, and then you assume, well, I guess God's that way too. Uh, he can't love me. How can he love me for what I have done? Uh, this little word forsake, uh, it, is, it is translated to leave one in a helpless state. This word forsake, a, a helpless state. To leave in disregard. To forsake to a degree where I even have no, no regard for this person at all. Uh, we find this word forsake again when Jesus was on the cross and he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why have you left me in such disregard? Well, we know that Jesus on that cross took all your sin and all my sin all upon himself. The God man, not another man like him, took it upon himself. It says God had to turn his head as, as God is holy. But he took all that on, and yet in the power of God was resurrected on the third day. Hallelujah. But listen, that same word was used, forsake. Jesus will not forsake you like that. When you are in Christ, he will not forsake you. Uh, we, we, we read that in Matthew 27, verse 46. We read it again in, in Mark 15, 34. Uh, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? The, the same Father who had to do that will not, not do that in Christ Jesus. He said, uh, we're, 
I'm not going to forsake you. And then he used that same word again in Hebrews 10, 25. He said, now, look at it. Here, here's another use of that very same word in Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. We are to assemble together. We're not to forsake the brethren. We, we are to come and encourage one another now that his day is drawing near. Now, I'm going to tell you, it's been tough, hadn't it? You know, having church on video, streaming, Facebook, um, you know, for some folks, you know, Twitter, other media sources, uh, Zoom on a telephone conference and then trying to be as creative as we can uh, with Twitter and what have you. And, and I'm glad to know that with intercessory prayer, we can pray for one another. We can encourage one another uh, in the body of Christ. I, I know that in the spirit uh, his spirit bears witness with our spirit. I can have intercessory prayer for others. You know, I tell you, it's been a joy for me to pray for Jerry uh, with this cancer and all that's going on with him to intercede. Matter of fact, the closest that you can be to someone, to somebody, is through prayer. In prayer, God takes you very in, in the very essence, in the very room, the very place of that person in their need as you intercede for them in the name of Jesus, in the power of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and that is a reality for us to, to understand that, to by faith to, to believe that and to know that because it is true according to the Word of God. But we, we also know how important it is to see a friendly face. We also know how important it was for Jesus when he appeared in that upper room with his disciples. They saw him. Oh, the joy the two that were on the road to Emmaus to finally realize that it was him, it was the Lord, and how we, we spoke together and we, we walked together and we broke bread together. And, and, and then, you know, John 21, how Jesus appeared on the shore with, with uh, you know, James and John and Simon Peter and two others. I mean, oh, the joy of the fellowship as Jesus prepared a breakfast for him. Are you with me? You cannot beat the body of Christ. We need the family of faith. We need to be with each other and encourage one another. I mean, you encourage me. I encourage you. We all encourage one another. And may I say this, when you get together, when you get to come back, when the doors are wide open again, hallelujah. I mean, I can't wait. Engage each other. I mean, it may just be a fist bump, you know. It may be, you know, still six-foot distance. But let the countenance on your face, uh, be an encouragement uh, to your brother or sister in Christ. And when your pastor's preaching, when your ministers are sharing the word of God, when, when, when the minister of music and the musicians are, are singing and playing, I mean, welcome them with a healthy countenance. Let them know you're engaged, you're with them, you're for them. You know, we're that way with our kids, aren't we? Come on, we're there, we're focused. May we be focused and encourage one another. Now that his day is drawing near, we do not need to forsake the assembling together. We don't need to forsake going to church and being part of church. You need church. You need, you need the church more than the church needs you. Now, does that sound sort of goofy? Am I making my point? We need each other, the body of Christ, the family of faith. And so I want to encourage you, man, realize that he loves you big time. God loves you. He said, he said, I will never, ever, ever, never, 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 never. I don't know how to get her to cross. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'll be with you. I'll never forsake you. I'll, I'll never leave you. I, I will never you. I'll always be for you. And that's a... As Billy Graham would say, oh, forever, never, <laughs> forever. And oh, what a day it'll be in heaven. It'll be just as sweet and sweeter with the family of God. Would you pray with me right now? Dear Jesus, I just ask you to come into my life right now. I ask you to be the Lord and boss and owner of my life. Our life, Lord. Oh, God, I, I lift up everyone that's watching, listening to this message, listening to your voice, your presence, your power. 
Oh, Father, may we do your will. May we respond to you because you love us and you care for us. I pray that that's a reality right now. In Jesus' name, amen. If you've never given your life to Christ, I pray that you pray a prayer just even then. Simple prayer, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Come into my life knowing that he will never, ever leave you or forsake you. You will always be the apple of his eye, his child forever. I love my boys. I don't care what they may or may not do. They're my boys. I love my boys. I love my wife. I love my sugar babe. Uh, on her good days and bad days, and thank God it's reciprocal. They love me. Good days, bad days. Listen, God who is holy and just loves us even when we fail. He picks us up. He lifts us up from sinking sand. I pray you gave him your life. If you did, call the phone number. Call and just say, hey, be bold. Get on the phone. Good night. You talk to all kinds of telemarketers all the time. Call this church who loves you and cares for you. And just say, hey, I want y'all to know, I just pray to give Jesus Christ my life. And they'll rejoice with you. They ain't going to hit you over the head with the Bible. If you need a church home, call in on the number and say, hey, tell me how to get to your church. I want to join your church. I want to be a part of your church. Uh, and when the doors are open, I'm going to be one of the first to come down the aisle. Maybe you are a member. You are a church member. You, you know Christ. You're part of this body of Christ. Man, be a good family member and, and, and love the family of faith. And what about, is, is God calling some of you to preach? Is he calling some of you to sing? Going to an avenue of ministry? What about missions? Is he calling you to the mission field? This world behind me, I mean, is he calling you to go into the world and share the gospel? Well, go. I can promise you this. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He'll go with you. He'll be right there with you and in you. Oh, man, may God be honored by your response to this message today. And, by, and listen, if you need someone to talk to, just someone to pray with you, call the number. They'll pray with you, okay? That's what the body of Christ is for. Amen? Amen. Well, God bless you. I've enjoyed sharing the word with you today. I was honored to have this privilege. Thank you.